the hours. So the first thing is you got the key to the city in yeah. Memphis. Yeah. Now, first you'd think like, oh, Memphis is a small town. But Memphis, as to get the key to the city as someone involved in music, that's pretty badass. So yeah. wh what happened? What was the deal? They didn't see that I had a couple of felonies. So that was that was cool. <laughs> no, I don't have any felonies. Uh, uh, I don't know. I um, That's all kind of a whirlwind. Um, uh, the, there's a great other engineer in town, Boo Mitchell, and we both won Grammys the same year. We actually have the same birthday too, but he won for Uptown Funk. Uptown Funk was done in Memphis. Mother. Oh, let's say different birth mothers. Let's just clear yeah, that. Yeah, different birth mothers, okay. but soul, soul brothers. Uh, yeah. uh, and then I won for engineering Jason Isbell. So they had a big party for us. And I, I think more because of Boo, because Boo's such a celebrity and i'm more of like a monk like a troll in the town but um uh they're celebrating and i got to tag along with boo and they gave us the key to the city which being the memphis um fanatic that i am really is one of the coolest things ever do you have it is it in your house uh it's somewhere around here yeah i uh, i think it's still in the closet i moved a year ago so you know everything's still in boxes <laughs> all right two more things you actually got to mix a bunch of Elvis tracks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've done, uh, uh, I got to remix some Elvis stuff for an album that's out called Way Down the Jungle Room, which is stuff he cut in the jungle room. Uh, and then we did um, a lot of live concerts from 72. And we just did this 11 CD box set from 69, which was really cool because it was eight track um, with a really funky band. And then there's um, a couple more projects coming out I can't talk about, but. Yeah, the guys at Sony Legacy um, reached out through a mutual friend and and came down and and uh, got to record or mix this Elvis stuff, and it was just like a, a dream come true, uh, you know, to get to solo his voice and and uh, hear all his stuff. And big shout out to RX because uh, Elvis has like eight gold rings on his fingers that clack on the RE15 while he's singing all the time, and that. Saved my butt a lot, but uh, it, it, yeah, I just work on his stuff. It's really heavy, uh, and sometimes a lot of these projects are really long. Like you, you've worked on some of these big live, you know, multiple CD box sets where, you know, two months you're on the same thing, and you know there'd be like the fourth, fifth weekend you're kind of going, what you know, what am I, where am I at, who am I, and then you solo and Elvis is, or you hear Elvis playing through the hallway, and you go, man, this is cool, you know. <laughs> That's amazing. And so just in case people don't know, the Jungle Room was his home studio at Graceland. Right? It was just like a den uh, of this like kind of tiki-esque furniture. And uh, he got tired of recording in Nashville. So RCA bought a bread truck, uh, turned it into a little mobile rig and drove it down to Memphis and ran wires into the Jungle Room. So the drummer's just sitting by the couch, the piano they rolled there. They're Elvis sang on the stairwell. <laughs> And they just recorded, and they had big hits out of there. Moody Blue, Danny Boy. Yeah, I was about to ask, so it, it isn't just like those were demos. I mean, there was a bunch of his records. Got yeah, a bunch of records in '76 were all Jungle Room sessions. And was Sam still involved at that point, or no? Sam had to sell Elvis's contract in 1955, four, uh, to RCA to to help keep the studio afloat. So after that, he he was they still talked on the phone and were friends, but he didn't produce Elvis. He didn't work with him. Mm -mm. That shows mm -mm. how I am. I shouldn't. It was Felton. Felton Jarvis was Elvis's long time. You know, Elvis really produced himself too. You know, and that's what's cool is, you know, when we think of Elvis, and he died in '77, but we think of '70s Elvis as overweight, on drugs, kind of over it. But you listen to stuff from '76. He's directing the band. He's like, when they're not fast enough, he's getting on to them. He was fully present, fully involved, and in singing his butt off. So wow. Amazing. I love when you can hear that stuff, the direction. There's a great, um, I don't even know what it's called because I listened to it on an airplane of all things, but it's uh, Miles and it was Miles, Miles. And it was all the take up to the album takes. So they'd start the track like Footprints and it was totally different and not happening at all. And he'd stop people, say like two or three words and then, and you just heard it come together, but you heard him directing it and to hear Elvis putting the band together and making them do what was then something that's iconic and everybody recognizes it, but to hear what it came out of must've been amazing. Yeah, it's so cool to see him. And and all the session guys are pros, you know, to, so to see them kind of, even their first takes 
or could be final take, you know, they, but then they just all find the the pocket to sit in and they keep playing less and less and it just gets to be the thing.